the the big storyline this week, this month has been uh, Elon Musk suing OpenAI, right? For those that haven't don't know what OpenAI is, it's basically the entity that owns ChatGPT, which is the leader. I would say I don't know if you agree, AJ, in the AI. You know, at least on the consumer side, like yeah. these consumers can go use it very frequently. And I guess Elon Musk was an early adopter and he's now suing them. And I guess, you know, the topic for the day is why is Elon Musk suing OpenAI? Why does it matter? I think it's a lot more than what we hear in mainstream media. And our special guest has kind of the insights as well as more of a philosophical discussion. These are things that I really want our viewers to kind of Think about wrapping your head around so that you're not just coming from the outside, but you have some inside information. All right. Well, let's go ahead and bring our special guest on. Uh, before we do that, his product, Core Disk, is revolutionizing the commodities exchange, the way that we that way the way that we trade commodities or the way that we think about free markets. Noah, welcome to the show. Uh, thoughts on uh, what we were just discussing, a little bit of background on, uh, let, well, let's go ahead and just talk about Elon Musk first, and then we can pivot into, uh, you know, the things that you're working on. What are your thoughts on what, everything that's going on with Elon Musk and the, the open AI suit? Uh, sure. Well, the suit is rather bizarre from my understanding. Uh, open AI, like many companies, is chartered in Delaware, and Musk is actually suing them in California. Uh, it was also originally chartered as effectively a charity. Uh, and and under Delaware law, that means that it, it effectively doesn't have shareholders. So while Musk did give them a large heap of money, along with a lot of other people, uh, the, the ordinary sort of relationship that an investor might have with a company where they'd have some sort of rights doesn't exist with a charity. They they have other rights, and that's why there's this bizarre, uh, you know, headline violating the company's principles um, is is what's being sued over. Uh, there's a few different things being alleged in the suit. Some of them are fairly crazy, uh, but one of them that is relevant, particularly for startups and and investors is that OpenAI has effectively transitioned itself from being a charity to a a startup hmm. um, the the OpenAI created it's still a nonprofit but it's created a subsidiary that is allowed to create returns for its investors although those returns are capped at 100 to 1 um so hmm. you know in the event that they produce thousand to one returns say uh the investors would not be able to realize that you know extra 900 you know fold gains beyond their their limited hundred fold returns uh which <laughs> cry me a river i guess but uh, <laughs> So Elon Musk just like mad that they're profiting or they're they're turning this concept of AI into a for-profit entity. Well, so it's difficult to wrap your head around several, some of these things because we only have access to their public statements. Uh, so I don't know what's actually in these people's heads. Uh, Musk has talked at length about having issues with the alignment of the corporation and mm. the risks of these these technologies are heavily underappreciated and are not being discussed um i have pointed out on other channels that sam altman did uh you know testify before congress and his statements are either lies or altman himself is simply entirely incompetent and has no comprehension of reality um, because if he had literally anything to do at all with the creation of chat gpt then he is aware of certain basic facts about computational mathematics that absolutely needed to be brought up in those forums um, and which would not reflect particularly kindly on open ai or 
really any of the other generative AI platforms. Uh, and Musk actually does reference some of those things, not in this lawsuit, but in conversations that he's had with people about conversations that he's had with those people. Uh, there's a memeable line of his that went around where he said that uh, he was talking to one of them uh, about these issues and was accused of being uh, human centric and and then said that, you know, mea culpa, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, with feeling that humans should be advanced in these things. Uh, but OpenAI received a in-kind investment of upwards of $10 billion from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, and the CEO of Microsoft has stated that effectively Microsoft has the, the technology in their vaults um, so that if OpenAI dries up and blows away, Microsoft will retain ChatGPT. Uh, and the there was a pretty serious board shakeup where the board attempted to fire Sam Altman uh, yeah. and did for like a few days. Yeah. And then they got fired instead. And he and some other people came back and now the board is much more Altman focused. And so probably part of what's going on with this lawsuit is a sort of tug of war between initial investors such as Musk and and much larger entities. Uh, ChatGPT, bear in mind, they've been at this for much more than a decade. And when they got started on this particular approach to the problem of natural language processing, uh, which is what they're in, their approach wasn't really considered any better or worse than any other approach. And what they were doing was just saying, well, you know, these, these neural net things are coming up. Let's just throw bigger and bigger neural nets at this problem and see what happens. And what they discovered effectively by accident is that bigger and bigger neural nets were performing better and better. Um, when you solve the various technical problems of getting them trained up properly. And so I, I read reports about like ChatGV2 years and years and years ago that made no splash at all um, and, and was not nearly as, you know, it wouldn't have been impressive. It was sort of relatively impressive, but it wasn't. It wasn't anything that was commercially transformative. But now in the three, three, five, four video, these other things that are coming out very rapidly, um, it's it's a real sea change, and and now that there might be a pot of money attached to it, the people are fighting over where that pot of money is going to land. You know what's crazy is that it's like big black boxes. None of us know how these things have been generated, and so it's like a few number of people. You know, it 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 just blows my mind whether it be Bard, uh, Gemini, whatever Google's version, or now Copilot, Microsoft being tapping into the Chat GPT. It's like they were developed in. I mean, I guess you've been reading papers about Chat GPT and their models, you know. But for the rest of us, they just appeared on the 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 screen eighteen months ago. They uh, work. You, you, well, I would I wouldn't go as far as saying that they worked, but yes, they they do something. Um, and I think an important thing to understand, and the reason why Altman's testimony, for example, exposes him as a fraudster, is that they don't actually understand how they work either. Um, oh. The the critical thing about this particular kind of approach is that it's black boxes all the way down. Um, so there are there are some other major breakthroughs in neural net ai like technology uh and i kind of keep going back to chess because it's something that people have a lot more awareness of the top two chess engines on earth one of them is an open source neural net system and it's about the second best and the other one is this open source project called stockfish and while we as humans cannot play chess even remotely as well as Stockfish can. We programmed it and we understand how it approaches the game. 
And so while we can't understand the moves that it's making, we 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 do have the capacity to read the entire instructions for how it comes up with those moves. Whereas the other system called Leela has been doing its black box thing of training its own tuning algorithm for wind probabilities. And while we understand that about Leela, um, why it thinks that moving a knight versus a pawn in this situation is generating higher wind probabilities is not something that humans, even the humans that that designed the system or participated in the in the continuing evolution of the system, have any awareness of. Wow. So AJ, I just I just want to pull up uh, Noah's product, the the core disk, and we mentioned that Sam Altman can't explain how his system works, but you probably can give a pretty detailed uh, explanation of, of what you're doing with core disk and how you're implementing this, uh, this new type of technology. Uh, so imagine Are there parallels with what we've been talking about, Noah. Sorry. Uh, I'm just, I'm uh -huh. so, okay. I'm so uh, involved in this conversation. I know we got to keep going, but, well, what are the parallels? What are the comparing well, and so contrasting? The, the the basic thing that all of these things are really driving towards is is what I call and what is shows up in some of the literature as super intelligence. The the ability to produce ideas or information that at a higher level that any individual human brain can. So in certain games like chess, poker, and go and checkers, we actually have those. We have computer programs that will tell us more about positions in those games than any person can relevantly, you know, produce. Markets are another and much more ancient example of super intelligence where the marketplace can provide us information about how the economy is organized at a, a much greater level than any single person could possibly know. Um, where, where my system operates is coming from an alignment first position. So mm -hmm. rather than building out some kind of super intelligent system and then just kind of wondering what it does, what I did was develop a very airtight uh, set of game theoretic incentives that allow entities to participate to create smarter marketplaces. And those entities could be people in the market, or they could be AIs if we develop them to the point where they're capable of participating in the market. And so what I've developed is a set of, of systems and measurements that effectively allows me to disentangle alpha from other kinds of advantage in the marketplace and specifically integrate alpha together from multiple points of view and specifically reward alpha while at the same time offering no real reward for less relevant forms of market information. Explain alpha. So alpha is the part of, of what makes you money in the marketplace that is mm -hmm real information about the actual future that winds up happening um yeah. and and it's it's the good stuff but it's also generally the least focused upon that's right by, by people in in the space because well it's very hard to produce uh <laughs> in fact it's it might be impossible to produce in general um and uh and so going after some of these other kinds of market momentum or, or other types of noise measures uh, can be done much more reliably and consequently is is sort of the basis of financial incomes. But sadly, it means that markets don't really perform as well um, because people are trying to shovel BS into them. And like everything else, it's garbage in, garbage out. That's right. That's interesting. Uh um, and uh, I just threw the link to your petition into our chat. Uh, it, can you give us a quick rundown of what, you, what you're trying to achieve in, so, in, in, in petitioning? I've been 
pursuing a, a patent on this technology for about nine years. The patent office has been breaking its own internal procedures and ordinary behaviors in order to throw up barriers. And so there's an appeal that will be heard uh, July 2025. Uh, and in the interim, since I don't really have anything to do except twiddle my thumbs, uh, I figured let's let's push this thing out there and see how much general interest there could be behind having a better economy. Um, specifically, the current overheads of the existing marketplaces are around the same size as the growth rate of our economy. So uh, by adopting this technology, we could actually see economies expanding at twice the rate and doing so pretty much from the bottom up. Uh, as production becomes more profitable, people could go start farms with the same kinds of returns that they might expect from starting successful unicorn. Lower ceilings, but, you know, returns are, are what puts food on the table. So um, why do you think, well, I'm, I'm sure it's just speculation, but why do you think that these barriers are going up in the, the um, patent office? So the current stated reason for why this isn't moving forward is that if this patent were to be granted, I would have complete control of the entire economy. Now, the, the, people, who, the people who wrote that down have personally communicated to my attorneys and I that that's nonsense. And the thing that makes you know that it's nonsense is that they've, they've also agreed formally that there's no prior art, which means every existing form of economic interaction is completely untouched by this patent. However, because these markets do appear to work algorithmically radically better than existing markets, and in fact, target the thing that allows current market incumbents to, you know, the New York Stock Exchange has been one of the most important marketplaces on earth for a couple of centuries. And that's not because of an unbroken chain of the smartest, most, you know, ethical human beings in history operating it. It's because whoever's biggest gets to stick around and keep being big. And my market, because it flips a lot of the basic systems on their heads, uh, would, would effectively be able to outcompete and take over from the current primary market incumbents on earth who are for all intents and purposes the most economically important entities that exist uh and and at the very least the person my my patent clerk knows that that's what's at stake um and and if whoever's giving him orders is also aware that that's at stake uh that definitely could provide a motive for slowing the whole thing down yeah it's like the same reason why all those people in reddit you know ran into issues when they started to beat beat the the big players in at their their own game with gamestop and stuff like that capitalizing on the short squeezes they were there's people in power right Right. Well, and that actually brings up another interesting point of the market failure in the with the existence of large coordinated information. So markets existed and functioned in an era where the retail players couldn't behave in a coordinated fashion because no coordinating global network of peer to peer communication could even existed. conceivably exist. That's right. Uh, but of course, we've had one of those since the 70s. And so the same way that collusive behavior by market insiders isn't terribly good for the marketplace and has you know, blown up in various bad uh, scandals throughout the centuries, a completely novel form of external collusion is now available. Uh, and, and bear in mind that things like ChatGPT, BARD, Gemini, and so on, provide yet another mechanism for incredibly wide scale personalized potential coordination, uh, which means that another entire layer of potential risks of that kind of behavior is is hypothetically, um, or it might actually be happening, but it's right now, public. yeah, right now. All right. Well, Noah, we appreciate what you're doing it sounds like if you pull it off the world will be a better place so we're rooting for you 
guys, uh, go 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 take care of uh, Noah's petition. Go put your name on that list. Let's get uh, you know it, it's getting more and more difficult for us to ride on the coattails of these big investors. Wouldn't it be better if you could actually just trade on what you see, you know, instead of trying to speculate on what they're thinking? You know what I'm saying? So go give Noah some some love there out of his petition. Plus, you've got a podcast, don't you? Uh, I do. Uh, speaking of Reddit, the former CTO uh, is actually my co-host. And uh, we talk about AI and some of these deeper issues uh, occasionally with guests and, and occasionally with each other. It's called The Fourth Age, The AI Revolution. Uh, and it's up on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, you know, all the platforms we could find. The fourth awesome. age. I know I'll be checking that out. We'll get we'll get the link to that posted. Uh, Noah, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you stopping by, giving us a little bit of insight. Uh, hopefully, you know our trading investing viewers can take a little bit away from it. Uh, but you know we're gonna get back to trying to profit off these markets because <laughs> that that's what we do. That's what we do on a day to day <laughs> basis. Noah, thank you so much. That was really, really a good, uh, enlightening talk for me. I enjoyed it. And I, I definitely think that our viewers uh, at least had their mind opened for a split second there.